Yo, what's up guys? I just wanted to do a uh, a new video about ADC itemization changes in patch 5.3. Uh, I wanted to address a few things. Um, from one of my older videos, when I said, oh, static shift trumps all, where I bitched about, I don't know why people are buying Phantom Dancer. Uh, even when they, they make the changes to Phantom Dancer and IE, I'll still buy Shiv. Uh, gold efficiency, blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> the thing about me is I'm not that good at math. I'm not a mathematician. Uh, my job is League of Legends, not math. Uh, I kind of have to feel things out, try things for myself uh, to get an understanding of them. Uh, so finally, after a while of playing, going Infinity Edge first straight up just doesn't really feel right to me anymore. Because for I get, you get 20% crit chance, so in f 10 auto attacks you'll crit two times, roughly. And in 5 auto attacks you'll probably crit one time. You can crit no times. Uh, and it feels like too much of a gamble to me to invest 3800 gold, uh, where I get only AD and, and crit chance. I get no attack speed. I get no extra crit chance. I get no armor pen. I get no life steal. You know, it's a it's a huge investment for not very much, in my opinion. Uh, the Infinity Edge, you know, it's a great item, but by itself, it doesn't shine to me, right? So, what I typically end up doing is say I'm playing a champion like Caitlyn. Jinx, maybe Tristana. I'm still deciding on a build on her. I, I think Tristana is awful, by the way. I'll make another video on that. But I, w I want to talk about the stats that you're getting for the items that you're buying. So, so BF Surge, you get 15, it's, it's 1550 gold. Pickaxe, 875. Cloak of Agility is 730. And what you get for, for these three items is 75 AD and 15% crit chance, right? So with the Infinity Edge, uh, you get... For, so combining these items, which is 645 gold, you get 5 attack damage, 80 attack damage, and 5% crit chance from the 15 uh, from Cloak of Agility. In the IE passive, I don't find the IE passive worth spending uh, 645 gold and 730 gold for 580, 5% crit, and the IE passive. It doesn't, it doesn't feel right to me. So what I like to do uh, is I will actually pick up some form of crit chance before my Infinity Edge. So if you look at my match history, uh, I've been playing a lot of Graves. Uh, just ignore the Vayne games. Vayne's ass. Don't worry about Vayne. Uh, the the Bork was just troll. It was the game was I could have built Morale and I'm not on this game we would have won. Uh, but you'll see I go Ghostblade on Graves. I go IE Ghostblade pretty much every game on Graves. I got a punt of that game and still lost. Uh, Caitlyn, IE PD, IE PD, IE PD, Sivir, IE PD. I also like Ghostblade on Sivir. Uh, notice. Now, aside from like these vein games, which I was kind of fooling around in two months ago, uh, well, they, okay, the, okay, those are two months ago. I didn't realize that, but I, I, you don't see me pick up Static Shiv anymore. I actually think Static Shiv is bad now. After the changes, um, pretty much what I end up doing is I go BF Sword, pickaxe. Uh, and I, I, I go, if I'm going Phantom Dancer, I'll pick up my Zeal and my Boots too, so Berserker Greaves, um, or even Boots 1, and uh, sometimes I go into PD, so that, that's what I kind of do on Caitlyn now. I go BF Sword with a Pickaxe. And I pick up a zeal for 1100 gold. Gives you 5% movement speed. 
and uh, oh god, I can't remember the the rest of the stats. Twenty percent attack speed, ten percent crit chance, and five percent movement speed. So basically, okay. So I want to talk about the movement speed specifically. With boots one and a zeal, you will have nearly the same movement speed as you would going from boots one to boots two. It's just slightly less movement speed. So I I, I typically go BF start pickaxe zeal uh, on, on champions that like to auto attack. Sometimes I'll upgrade the zeal all the way into phantom dancer. Uh, so I get out, out of out of BF start pickaxe and PD. Uh, PD stats are just mind boggling. Mind boggling right now. You get 50% attack speed. You get 35% crit chance. Let that sink in for a minute. 35% crit chance and you compare it to the other items 20% crit chance, so the same as IE. 15% crit chance, so even less than Shiv and IE. The, the crit chance on Phantom Dancer right now is insane. And then you, you, you get an extra 10% attack speed uh, over Shiv. I, I don't like Shiv anymore. For 300 more gold, um, you get 10% uh, uh, attack speed and 15% crit chance. And 1% less movement speed. And by the way, uh, the Phantom Dancer passive is really nice right now. Because creep block is so absurd. Uh... I really, I, I, I genuinely really like the Phantom Dancer passive right now. And I definitely think that the crit chance is worth it picking up. So if I'm playing champion like Caitlyn, Jinx, uh, why can't I come up with other champions? We'll go to Marksman. Champions that like their auto attacks. So Ash, Caitlyn, Draven, definitely Draven. Uh, all pretty much all the Draven mains now go Phantom Dancer. Um, Jinx. Uh, you can go it on Lucian. I'd I'd prefer Ghost Blade. Sivir. Trist. I actually like Phantom Dancer on Twitch now, but Twitch is pretty ass, so it doesn't matter. And I I like Phantom Dancer in Vayne now. I don't buy Shiv on any champion now, except sometimes Kalista. Kalista's just weird. This is really weird. But uh so pretty much what I what I think about uh the crit chance items right now is Shiv is the medium between Phantom Dancer, which is oh hey, I'm an ADC that likes to auto attack, so I buy Phantom Dancer. And Yomu's Ghost Blade where it's like, oh, I'm an AD caster with high base damages. Uh, I really like the CDR, so you know, Graves Lucian, uh, Sivir also likes the CDR. I like the attack damage, the extra attack damage. Um, the crit chance is a bonus, and the 20 flat armor pen. And, I, and Shiv is like, oh, you know, I like to auto attack. Uh, I like the little zappy thing that does no damage. Um, you know, it's, it, typically bought on champions that like to burst, you know, Graves. I saw Shiv built on Graves like every game. Um, I saw him in like the EU and NA LCS. Um, I think Forgiven built Shiv on Lucian. Uh, I even saw Shiv on a Caitlyn, but like the difference is just immense between Phantom Dancer and Shiv. Like if you want to be auto, if you want your auto attacks to do damage, you want your auto attacks to come out faster, you go Phantom Dancer. Because it gives you 55% crit chance with an IE. So you have over a 50% chance of critting. Whereas if you go Shiv, you have a 40% chance of critting. Which is pretty low, honestly. Uh, when, when I'm investing 3,800 gold into an item, I find it really hard not to pick up the extra crit chance on Phantom Dancer. Um, and then honestly on Graves I go Ghost Lead every single game. So what I'll go on Graves, and we'll separate it again, is I'll go BF Sword, 
Pickaxe. And just straight up Yomu's Ghost Blade. Pretty much. And that allows me to like kind of skip over boots even. Uh, it's a really nice build path too. Because if you say you get shit on and lane by a Caitlyn, like level 3, and you have to recall, and you have 700 gold, you can pick up two long swords, which will build into your Brutalizer, which will build into your Ghost Blade later. Uh, Ghost Blade is insane when you think about it. Um, I was never, like, I kind of lost the taste for Ghost Blade for a while. I stopped building it, but I actually have started building it again. Um, the numbers aren't there for gold efficiency. It's only 88% gold. To, oh, wait. But with its active, it's 176.9% uh, uh, <laughs> gold efficient. So it's got a 45 second cooldown active, right? Uh, you compare to the you compare this gold efficiency to Shiv, which is 102%, and Phantom Dancer, which is 126%. That number is insane. You get 3080, 5% crit chance less than a Shiv. Uh, you get 10% CDR, 20 armor pen, 20 flat armor pen. Double, uh, double your seals. So on squishy targets, like you get nine armor from seals, you get twenty armor pen. So <laughs> you double that. Um, it's only on a forty-five second cooldown. You get forty percent attack speed and twenty percent movement speed for six seconds. It's insane. It, I think Ghost Blade is an insanely good item. I really, really like it. You just pretty much spam the active. Uh, you can pretty much use the active on your way to way out of base, like a like a mini home guard, because it's such a low, uh, such a low cooldown. I think Shiv is just a complete waste of gold now. I I don't buy Shiv ever. I think I've bought Shiv once in the past like two weeks, and that was on Kalista. Uh, Kalista's different. Uh, we won't talk about her. <laughs> she's gonna get she's gonna get fucking slaughtered by nerfs. But yeah, uh, I see a lot of people, they just go straight up IE. Straight up IE isn't really good without the crit chance to back it up. And even if you get the crit chance to back it up, you still don't have your attack speed, and you still don't have your movement speed. So, I really like these builds right now. Um, with, with, like with uh, BF Sword Pickaxe ZLPD, you get uh, 75 AD, 50 percent attack speed, 35 percent crit, uh, then the same movement speed, you know, whatever, uh, versus, we'll go, we'll compare it to, we'll compare it to IE plus a zeal. So you get uh, 80, 80. Um, I think Zeal is 20% attack speed, yeah. 20% attack speed. Uh, I think it's 30% crit. So it's 10%, yeah, yeah, 30%. And then the IE passive. Which at 30% crit, I just don't see the IE passive worth it. And only 20% attack speed. So, with 20% attack speed, I'm not attacking that much. I don't get that many auto attacks off on a target. So I have a very low chance of critting them. If I only auto attack somebody like 5 times, I have a low chance of critting them. I have a, I'm going to crit like maybe 1 time. Unless I'm lucky, then, then obviously that's the better build. But when I can pick up 50% crit chance and 35% crit, I I get more auto attacks off faster, so I have a higher percent percent chance of critting because I auto attack more. Uh, I just I don't know. I I am not a fan of the I like straight up first item anymore. Um. What else did I want to talk about? I wanted. Oh my gosh. Uh, so I was going over my viewers' games the other day, and I was looking through their match histories, 
you know, I was pulling up them on pulling them up on op.gg, and I and I was looking at them, and I just saw home guards on every single game, win or loss, like religiously home guards, and I realized that a lot of people buy home guards on ADC without even thinking about it at all. Notice how none of these games I have home guards. Not a single one of these games do I have home guards in them. That's because on ADC, home guards are super situational. There, maybe one in like a hundred games will I buy home guards. Uh, the enchantments are really good. And it's a, it's a really easy way to waste 475 gold that you could spend on a longsword, that you could spend on an elixir. Uh, home guards are S. You have to, when you're buying a home guard, you have to, right when you go to buy it, you have to know, if I buy these home guards, will we actually defend this inhib? Will we actually defend this inhib tower? Will I actually get a kill for buying these home guards? Will I actually get to Baron fast enough when I buy these home guards? Because if you buy the home guards and, oh, you know, you're running really fast and you don't make it to Baron and they get it anyways, then you just wasted 475 gold. You know, it's really important to not waste that gold. It adds up. 475 gold could end up being the difference between you completing your Bloodthirster, your, your last item, Bloodthirster, and not completing it and then losing the game because you didn't have a bloodthirster. Um and I want to talk about, you know, when when do I buy fur, when do I buy lacrity? Uh like the difference is so this game I went for Bork, Yomu's Phantom Dancer, uh i.e. pretty much I just wanted to one v one uh people in team fights. Just, you know, I wanted to shred the Aurelia when she jumped at me. I wanted to shred the Cassidy when he jumped at me. Uh, I wanted to kite around team fights. Really weird build, because I didn't have a Last Whisper. It was basi basically a substitute for a Last Whisper this game. Uh, they were really squishy. You know, they have Cassidy. He's only going to build a Zanyas. They had Aurelia. She's going to build a couple armor items. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it was an AP Amumu, if I remember correctly. I bought Fur Boots this game specifically because... I'm always going to have an, a target to auto attack in a team fight. There, it's never like, oh, I have to wait for this cooldown before I can join a team fight. I'm just kind of standing here out of vision. I will always have a target to auto attack in a team fight because there will always either be a rally or a casted on me because they're such mobile champions. And I'm their target. You know, I will always have a target to auto attack. And that's basic when I buy fur boots. You know, if the, if the enemy team has an Udyr, he's going to be running at me. So I'm always going to have a target to auto-attack. If you buy Fur, and you're kind of on the outskirts of fight, and you're just waiting for cooldowns to be blown, Fur is a waste of gold, because you're not using the passive on it. And then you look at a game like this, so I bought Alacrity this game. Um, they have Twisted Fate. This is a weird game. This is a weird game. They didn't have an ADC. Um, they had a Wukong, TF, Leona, Thresh, Vi. So Vi built full damage, Wukong built full damage. So pretty much I cannot get anywhere close to a team fight, or else I get Flash Wukong ulted, I get Flash Vi ulted, and I get I get TF uh, ulted on top of. So I have to be a significant distance away from the team fight until certain cooldowns are blown. So Leona ult, Vi ult, uh, Wukong ult, and then I can walk up and join the team fight. So that's why I buy Alacrity in this game, because I'm just kind of standing around waiting for cooldowns to be blown, and then after those cooldowns are blown, I walk up to the fight. And then let's see some more. Uh, we bought Furs this game. They had Aurelia. They had Hecarim. Those two champions are going to be running at me. So I buy Fur because I always have a target to auto attack. It's not really any cooldowns that I have to wait for. Um, you know, Hecarim ult is really fucking easy to dodge. They don't have any, you know, any cooldowns that I have to wait for. So I always have a target to auto attack. I bought Alacrity this game. 
They have um, Scion. Uh, they have NASA, Leeson. I always this game. I always have something to auto attack. Um, but I kind of uh, this game. I was waiting for Wither. And all and most of Scion's cooldowns. Uh, so I buy I buy Alacrity there, whatever. That probably should have bought Fur, but I don't think it ended up mattering. Uh, notice how I'm buying Fur a lot against Aurelia. Aurelia, I I, I typically buy Fur against because she's typically always going to jump on you. Uh, another thing I like to buy Alacrity for is if they have a lot of uh, skill shot poke. So champions like Zarath, I'll buy Alacrity. Um, because I'm not going to be in range to auto attack something while Zareth is casting his abilities. I'm going to be off on my own. There's not going to be any target to auto attack. So I just buy Alacrity to dodge uh, skill shots. Um, don't buy home guards. It's a waste of gold. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about, I'm probably missing a million things and I'm going to regret turning off the video after, is the far side orb. Um, so the scrying orb is 475 gold. I mean, not, it's, it's free. You know, you should be swapping to this every game, like around your third back, honestly. I made a video about that, too, so I just go look for it. Um, basically, you know, you get the you get the small location within 3,500 range for two seconds, 120 second cooldown. And then for 250 gold, how often, at, like, mid to late game do you back and you, your inventory is full on items, except you know you have like 250 gold, and it's like, oh man, I wish I had a slot for like a ward. Upgrade your Farsight Orb. It uh, gives you 500 more range on the Farsight Orb, and it's on a lower cooldown, 120 seconds to 90 seconds, and uh, it also places a visible ward in the area that lasts for 60 seconds. I was actually toying around with it today, and I upgraded into the Farsight Orb a few times, and it is really, really nice uh, to be able to sneak a 60 second ward somewhere on the map uh, when an enemy team is trying to bait Baron, or bait Dragon, or bait Red Buff. It's really nice. Uh, they, they only have to auto attack it once and it gets rid of the ward, but the fact that they have to go at the fact that it sits there for 60 seconds unless they auto attack it is really nice. You can you can do some really nice things with it. It's only 250 gold. Uh, definitely look into into upgrading that. Um, I think that was all I wanted to talk about. Uh, oh, another thing I noticed uh, looking over some, you know, platinum, gold, silver, bronze games. Uh, ADCs. You know, I looked at a lot of my viewers' um, match histories, and what what they what it seems like they like for a defensive item is they like Guardian Angel, which is twenty eight hundred gold, and you get fifty armor and fifty magic resist, and it's an awful build path. Where um, you don't get any HP with the item. You only get you only get resistances. So like honestly you think about fifty armor. I'm gonna get rid of fifty armor with my last whisper on ADC. I'm gonna get rid of fifty magic resist with you know Sork Shoes, a void staff, my masteries and runes. Um and typically now they get Abyssal Scepter as well, so that's another minus twenty magic resist. So you're basically spe you're spending 2,800 gold on armor and magic resist, which is worthless by the time you're picking up a guardian angel. And the awful passive, um, <laughs> it's on a 300 second cooldown, and it's like a shitty version of Zani's Hourglass. Uh, you get like if you're in a position where you're taking lethal damage and dying. Chances are you're going to be in a bad position when you come out of it. Guardian Angel is is better against, um, you know, reset champs like Cat. I still would rather have 
you know, maybe a Banshee's Veil or Quicksilver Sash. Um, you can actually Quicksilver Sash Katarina Q. Um, it's kind of nice, you know, her Ignite. Uh, Guardian Angel is so bad. And then another item they like to buy is uh, Banshee's Veil, which is the, pretty much the same gold. But on the better side of uh, Banshee's Veil, I know you can't see uh, the pop-up. I don't know why it doesn't come up on the monitor, but it's it's 450 HP. Uh, 55 magic resist. And then the spell shield. Uh, the thing is, is Banshee's Veil used to be better before they made the changes to health and mana regen. Um, you used to get a lot more health regen for the Banshee's Veil. It's honestly really ass health regen now. Um, you know, the 55 magic is pretty nice, but again, I mean, mages pretty much destroy that with Abyssal, Void, and Sork Shoes. Um, but at least you get HP to back it up, so it's not so bad. But I mean, the spell shield is pretty underwhelming. You think spell shield is like, oh, you know, I want to block an ability. Uh, typically, the abilities you're gonna want to block are, are CC abilities. You know, Threshuck, um, Zareth Stun, Morgana Bind, uh, stuff like that. So for the same cost of Spectre's Cowl, you can get a Quicksilver Sash, which is, uh, it gives you 30 magic resist, and you can remove all debuffs for, you can remove all debuffs, and it's on a 90 second cooldown, so it's improved clon, like if you look through my, if you look through my match history, Quicksilver Sash, I was building into Quicksilver Sash. QSS, QSS, I was building QSS, QSS, building QSS, QSS, Merc Skim, QSS. This game I built the Banshees uh, because Wukong was flash ulting me with Distortion Boots every fight. And uh, the Fizz ult is bugged, you can't QSS it. So that's why I bought Banshees there. I uh, Bought Banshees there because I wanted to block Shaco Shiv or Shaco Bork because Shaco wanted to one v one me this game. Every team fight he was jumping on me with uh, a sweeper, upgraded sweeper, and I just wanted to be able to block. Like with Shaco, you with a Banshees bail against Shaco, you either get to block his Shiv, which does an ass ton of damage. Or his Blade of the Rune King, which he had. So either way, like it was a it was a really nice buy against Jacko. Um, it, like he was oh god, he was such a he was so fat. I remember that game. But like, look how often I buy QSS religiously. QSS is disgustingly good right now. Twelve hundred and fifty gold for that awesome active, and it upgrades into an eighty AD item late game, Merc Skim. 8080, and the uh, it also in, in, in gives you the uh, movement speed passive. It's 50% movement speed for a second. You get 80 attack damage and 35 magic resist. Gives you an insane late game. I can't I can't tell you how many times I out carried uh, super fat ADCs because they spent their money in Banshee's Veil instead of a uh, uh, Merc Skim. Like, ADAD late game is absolutely insane. ADAD is amazing. Um, was there anything else? Mm, I think that about covers it, honestly. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions uh, as far as itemization goes or, you know, maybe new videos uh, you'd like me to post. I, I kind of like doing stuff like this. It's fun. I like I like talking. I like theory crafting and stuff. Um, so just let me know. Let me know what you guys think, and I will uh, catch you guys catch you guys soon. I'm gonna stream tomorrow. Come stop by, and uh, 
Like, comment, favorite, subscribe, and I will uh, catch you guys later.